Here we have the chain rule for a function to a power. So our third longer rule, it's the shortest of the longer rules, but the hardest one to recognize. So if you have y equals, and you have a function to a power, so instead of just being x to the fifth, it's x plus one to the fifth. So it's something more than just a regular x being raised to a power would tell us that we have to use the chain rule for it. And the way that we would is we would say y prime, we're going to bring down the power, and no surprise here, we're going to subtract one for the new power. We're going to put that original function to the new power, and then at the very end, we multiply by the derivative of that inside. So we're going to bring down the power, keep the same inside, raise it to a new power, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside at the end. So we could have tried to use this with a regular x, right? If you had x to the 10th, you could have said, well, first I'll bring down the 10, keep that x and raise it to the 9, and then I'm going to multiply by what was being raised to the power, the derivative of that. So derivative of the inside here, derivative of 1x is just 1. So we don't do it when it's just x to the power because it would just take an extra second of our lives that we don't need to spend. Um, but anything besides a regular x, we're not just going to bring down the power and subtract from the new power. We're going to bring down that power, subtract from the new power, but then also multiply by the derivative of what was inside being raised to the power. So a nice, short, longer rule to have. So we have learned product, which always has a plus. Quotient has a minus, and chain rule always has multiplication at the end. We multiply by the derivative of the inside. So looking at this one, we have f of x, so its derivative is going to be labeled f prime of x, and we have 3x plus pi being raised to the fourth. So we have more than just an x being raised to a power, so that's how I know it's a chain rule. I'm going to bring down that power, subtract one from the new power, 4 minus 1 is going to be 3, put that same exact original piece on the inside, and then at the end, I need to multiply by whatever the derivative of the inside is. So that inside piece was 3x plus pi. The derivative of 3x is 3. And the derivative of pi is just a constant, so its derivative is 0. So bring down the power, subtract from the new power, keep the original on the inside, and multiply by the derivative of the inside at the end. The hardest part about this rule is recognizing it, for sure. So the next one looks pretty different from that first one. But it's still more than just x raised to a power. It is x squared minus 7x. And we need to take a second and rewrite this because it's under a root. So it's going to rewrite to be a fraction. So the big power on everything is not written. So we know it's just the first power. So this is to the first power and third root. So we have x squared minus 7x raised to the 1 third. And that comes from page 2. If you need to look back and find those laws of exponents. Now I can apply this chain rule. I'm going to bring down the power, one-third, and subtract one for the new power. One-third minus one is minusing three-thirds. So one minus three gives me negative two-thirds. Put that original to that new power. And last piece is multiplying by the derivative of the inside. So derivative of x squared is 2x, and derivative of negative 7x is negative 7, our mini rule. So bring down the power, subtract it from the new power, multiply by the derivative at the end. Looking at the next one, did a quotient rule sneak in here? Well, we have 10 over ln of x minus 3x plus 1 to the fifth. Is that a quotient rule? It's a quotient, but we don't have x's in both the top and the bottom. So this is still a chain rule. Again, they look pretty sneaky. So it's just like when we had maybe 1 over x to the fifth, we said, hey, that's the same thing as x to the negative 5. That way we could bring down the power and subtract from the new power. So you want to remember, we can still rewrite these exponents. So we're going to do that here. Remember that property from before. We're going to keep that 10 and say everything that's in the denominator is really raised to a negative fifth power. Negative exponents are in the denominator. So we have 10 and then we have ln of x minus 3x plus 1 all raised to the negative 5. 
So when we go to take the derivative of this, g prime of x, we're going to follow that same rule. We're going to bring down the power. 10 times negative 5 is negative 50. Bring down the power and subtract 1 for the new power. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. I like to subtract 1 for the new power before I even copy down the original inside, or else sometimes I see people forgetting to write the new power on it. So bring down negative 5, subtract 1, you get negative 6 for the new power. And then last piece, multiply by the derivative of the inside at the end. So the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Derivative of negative 3x is negative 3. And the derivative of 1 is 0. There's our chain rule. See if you can pause the video and maybe try the next one. You're going to do the same thing. This one's a nice obvious chain rule because it's just written to a big power, and we have more than x being raised to the 100, so we know we're going to start by bringing down that 100, raising the inside to a 99, and then because what was inside was more than just an x, we need to take the derivative of it. So bring down the power, subtract from the new power, multiply by the derivative of the inside. We have a rule 6 here because we have e to a power that's more than just x. So we're going to take the derivative of the power first. So derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth. Derivative of negative 2 is 0. So there's the derivative of the power times e to the original power. And then our other piece on the inside, derivative of 9x is 9. So bring down the power, subtract one for the new power, multiply by the derivative of the inside. Lastly, here we have another weird looking one because it's stuck under a root. I'm going to take a second and rewrite this as a one half power because I see it's a regular square root. So we have x to the fifth plus 4 to the x minus 3. I'll raise to one half. Now that we did the algebra and rewrote it, we're ready to do the calculus, which is going to be the same thing over and over. We're going to bring down the power, keep the original inside, and figure out what that new power would be. So we need to do 1 half minus 1, so we're going to get negative 1 half when we do that. The original inside gets raised to this new power. And then product always has a plus, quotient has a minus, chain has multiplication. So don't forget to multiply at the end. We're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. We have derivative x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth. 4 to the x is ln of 4 times 4 to the x. It's not like e to the x, where it's just e to the x. We need the ln of our base times our base to the original power. And then lastly, derivative of negative 3 is 0. So there's our chain rule. Derivative is going to be bringing down the power, subtracting one for the new power, and then multiplying by the derivative of the inside. And it can look a few different ways. If there's not x's in both the top and the bottom, it is not a quotient rule. It is just the chain rule. You need to rewrite it as a negative power. It could look like a root, so you rewrite it to be a fractional power, or it might be a nice whole number that's positive, and then you get to just jump into the rule. So a few ways that chain rule can look.